Good morning. Welcome to those of you who are here in the church and to those of you watching online. Thank you for joining us for our celebration of the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity. This feast celebrates our Christian belief that God is a trinity of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and yet remains one God, not three. Each person of the Trinity is unique and distinct, and yet their love, unity, and communion is so intense that they are eternally bound together as one God. It is impossible for our limited human minds to understand fully this great mystery. Nevertheless, our belief in the Holy Trinity challenges us to imitate their love and unity in our lives, in our families, and in our church. As mentioned last week, today we will be having a special collection for the Fund for Retired Priests from the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. There are special envelopes in the pews for this purpose. Please place your donation into one of these special envelopes and then place it in the regular collection basket during the offertory at today's Mass. Thank you for your generosity. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Francis. The preacher is Brother John Paul, our Dominican novice. Please join and sing with me number 196, Holy God, we praise thy name. Number 196, we will sing verses 1 and 3. 196, Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before Thee. All on earth Thy scepter claim. All in above adore Thee. Infinite Thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. Verse 3. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, three we name Thee, while in essence only one, undivided God we claim Thee. And adoring bend the knee While we hone the mystery And adoring bend the knee While we hone the mystery in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This Sunday is a high solemnity. We focus on the most fundamental and essential teaching of the Catholic Church, that God, who is one, is a community of the three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Don't worry, I don't understand it either. But, but we, come accept to, to, we come accepting this great truth without comprehending it, and yet it gives light to everything that we say and believe about Jesus. Every way that Jesus was present to the disciples and is present to us bears testimony to this great truth so fundamental and essential, the highest of all the truths in importance, because from this truth, all other mysteries flow. Let us now, trusting in God and his mercy, let us uh, confess our sins as we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Thus says the wisdom of God, the Lord possessed me, the beginning of his ways, the forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. From of old I was poured forth at the first before the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains or springs of water, 
Before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet the earth and fields were not made, nor the first clods of the world. When the Lord established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out the vault over the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he fixed fast the foundations of the earth, when he set for the sea its limit, so that the waters should not transgress his command. Then was I beside him as his craftsman, and I was his delight day by day, playing before him all the while, playing on the surface of his earth, as I found delight in the human race. The word of the Lord. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, what is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O Lord. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beast of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, But we even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope, and hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears, 
and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you, he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Dear brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. So this solemnity, which highlights the most essential, the most fundamental truth and teaching of the Catholic Church, this Sunday is a chance to look theologically at a truth that we do not comprehend. I don't get it. The Pope doesn't get it. And yet we live the church lives in this, in this reality. And when we accept and contemplate and are welcomed into this mystery, it makes so much clear from this mystery, all other mysteries of the church flow. And it sheds light on everything. Now, we have obstacles to understanding. Here's how we define it. God is one, and God is a trinity of three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, without dividing the divine unity. The Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Father. They are not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not them. So, before you take your brains out and start scratching them going, I can't get this, let's move into this more deeply. Why should we believe in the Trinity? Is it in the Bible? Is there any place in the Bible, if I find, look page by page, will I find the word Trinity anywhere? No, you will not. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. Then why should we believe it? Let's go into this deeper. We have an obstacle understanding this with the word persons, three persons. You and I, you know, I'll talk about myself too. We hear three persons and we conclude, oh, three people. It doesn't say three people. There aren't three people in the, in the Trinity. The word person is a translation of a unique Greek term, and, um, and it is chosen very carefully. It was formulated uh, during the uh, the time after the apostles, Paul, who we hear today in the letter to the Romans, his masterpiece, it's the, you know, mo the longest of his letters, and it's written to the most important audience that he, well, all of his audiences were important, um, but the, you know, to go to Rome, he needed to have a, uh, a firm, a very strong statement. of, And he, when he talks about uh, this reality of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, he's already laying the groundwork uh, for how the, the doctors of the church will later um, put on that word Trinity, even though the word is not there. But it's still important that we, that we uh, enter into this carefully. Let's look at how God reveals himself to the children of Israel. Specifically, God reveals himself as one God. I am, I am the Lord your God, and you, will sh you shall not have false gods before you. Listen to how God speaks to his people and calls them away from the false gods of the other nations around them. He calls them to himself. 
There's a beautiful reading, not from this morning, but it's from Isaiah chapter 43. Now says the Lord your God, who created you and formed you, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One, your Savior, because you are precious in my eyes and glorious because I love you. These words come centuries before Jesus is born, and yet God, uh, Jesus knows these words, knows the prophets, has inspired the prophets, and the, uh, the action of God is as father and creator and redeemer is becoming uh, understood by the prophets uh, after the children of Israel have been so faithless and betrayed God so much. You know, don't have false gods. Well, what do we do? We go to the false gods. What, you know, be faithful to me. The prophet's calling uh, us back. Why should we be faithful? God says, I created you and formed you. Fear not. I have redeemed you and called you by name. You are mine. God is faithful. God is faithful despite our unfaithfulness. Now the New Testament. In the New Testament, we hear about the origins of Jesus, where the ancestors, the uh, the, um, the, the beginning of his ministry and his teaching. And the three gospels known as the gospel according to St. Matthew, St. Mark, and St. Luke, they tell us in very similar ways uh, and elaborating, um, one uh, elaborating what the other has said, ways that we can understand Jesus. It's the fourth gospel, the holy gospel according to St. John, where we enter into a knowledge of Jesus much more intimately. Uh, from his Last Supper discourse, the very heart of the gospel according to St. John, the very heart of the word of God, becomes an intimate sharing of Jesus. I have told you, I, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. When he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will speak what he hears and declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the father has is mine. This reason I told you that he will take from what is, what is mine and declare it to you. The language of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is explicit in these inside out, the very intimate heart of Jesus as he opens himself to the apostles who, remember, this is the Last Supper. They still don't understand who he is. And after his resurrection, they will um, be struggling and they uh, will finally at his ascension when they see him taken up before them into the presence of God they will re return to Jerusalem rejoicing now they know now they know what they couldn't completely say before but it's still not ready yet and it's when the gift of the Holy Spirit so the very experience of the the church at the time of uh, Jesus's ministry, when they could see Jesus, they didn't need faith. They could see Jesus. But when he ascends into heaven, begins the time where now it relies on faith. And the faith is not strong yet until 10 days later, the Pentecost, which we celebrated last week. God is now, um, that the faith becomes a boldness and they 
go to the ends of the world, starting from Jerusalem, to preach about Jesus. So what, what is it about this truth that is so fundamental and essential? Again, God is one, and you cannot divide God into parts. God is always present, completely present in every place that we might go because in God there's no place. But we who do live in space and time and place, we have our whole existence within the very will of God. And God is a community of persons. This is language that is already far above our human concepts. But relax. Don't try and rationalize it because rationalizing always tries to chisel it down to human concepts which will not get it. So we use the specific language. The Father in his creating, the Son in his incarnation, and in his death on Calvary for the forgiveness of our sins, and his sending forth the, pent- the, and the spirit of Pentecost, the Father who we call creator and Father. We, it's okay to pray to God as Father. The Mass, most of the Mass are prayers directed to the Father. The Son, St. John begins his Holy Gospel by saying, in the beginning was the Word. The Word. What is the Word? We know words, but do we know the Word? The Word was God, and the Word was, was with God, and the Word was God. This echoes the second reading, or the first reading we heard today from the, um, the letter, uh, from Proverbs. You know, that wisdom. I was there when the Lord created things. Already an understanding in language that there is something that is beyond language. And it's in the unity of the word and God who conceives the word. He is begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him, all things came to be and were made. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus promises in the, in the uh, gospel, for the, the Spirit, he, the, he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Each of the persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is truly God. They all have the fullness of the divine nature and substance. And are because they share the one divine substance, they are one being. And yet, there's a distinction in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, I know, I can see I lost you already. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. Um, So let me just move into the final words. Therefore, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are a community. They are relation. They are relationship. Now, we have relationships, but God's relationships are not like that. You know, our relationships, well, they kind of define who I am. Um, You know, what's the matter with Father Francis? Well, you should see his relations. Oh, okay, that explains a lot. Okay, um, um, if you know my relations, you know, you, you know me. But that is not what we're talking about God. God's relationships are, uh, they don't divide the essence of God. They are within the unity of God. And it all boils down to this relationship. Because God communicates himself to each one of us. As the spirit was breathed into Adam, so the spirit is breathed into each of us. Um, We are not dust, you know, in a greatly abstracted way, yes. But we are flesh and blood. And God breathes into us the spirit. 
that we have the faculties of the soul and the spirit. Of, we have mind. We have will. We have the passions. We have, um, uh, we have so much that is our intellect. And it is in n- recognizing that we can go so far. And then finally there are mysteries that help understand who I am and who I am in relationship to God. I mean, St. Paul in his letter to the, to the Romans, you know, he, he refers, to the, refers to the Holy Spirit and to the whole mystery of God um, in his reading, in his, in his letter. The word Trinity doesn't appear in the gospel but the reality of the relations of the Father and the Son and the Spirit saturate every prayer and every part of the, of the Gospels. So we continue uh, in, the, uh, in the spirit of this great truth. We continue because God, His Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is breathed into us. That is God's life in us. Next week, we will go to the next mystery of the body and blood of Jesus and how the Father who can speak in there is, you know, we exist so the Son can speak and bread becomes his body, wine becomes his blood, and he sustains us. So as we continue in our uh, journey today, preparing to receive communion at this Mass We know that God is promising us this life, this life that gives us life. Things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the wonder of the Holy Trinity, In our lives, we make our prayers confident in the infinite generosity and love of God. For all the peoples of earth created in the image of the Holy Trinity, may the world find the way to peace in God's commandments and through the example of Christians. We pray to the Lord. For the church that our relationship with Jesus might be the foundation of our lives and lead us more deeply into the mystery and the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. That the love of God would inspire the world's leaders and bring an end to the racism, prejudice, and violence that continues to plague our country and our world. We pray to the Lord. 
for continued progress in our battle against the pandemic, and for those who are still suffering from its effects, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for the people of St. Dominic's Parish, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For all the intentions in our Book of Intentions and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Father, help us to profess with our words and with our lives the undivided love and communion you share with your Son and the Holy Spirit. We ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, beloved, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by the angels and archangels, cherubim too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we have brought to you. We pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So in the love, let us turn to one another and share the sign of the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. So we, we pray the act of spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. At this time, we have a special treat. You're going to be introduced to one, our, our novice this year, Brother John Paul. Hello. Thank you. So as Father Francis said, I'm the novice um, for the Dominicans in the Western province. That means that you guys get to pray more than we have more next year. <laughs> Um, and I want to share with you a little bit of my vocation story, but I kind of want to share from the theme of this question of where do you call home or may, what makes you feel at home? Now, um, that might mean bring you back to some memories of a nice family meal, maybe with some lechon or pancet for a birthday party. Um, I know for me, it makes me think of at home in Chicago, where I'm from, with my, I've got seven siblings, and my mom's home-cooked food, and just makes me feel at home, right? Well, I want to share with you a little bit about um, how I went away from home, symbolically and figuratively, like the prodigal son, where I, I grew up in a good Catholic family, but as you all know, uh, teenagers can be a little rebellious. And so uh, during my freshman year of high school, I started rejecting the faith of my parents and rejecting God, thinking that it was just a bunch of rules that was going to keep me from being free and keeping me from being happy. And so I tried to find that happiness. I tried to find that rest. I tried to find that peace outside of God. Like Father was saying during the homily is that we, we, we try to replace God with other false gods. And so I started to live for those false gods, and that, whether that be sexual pleasure or drugs or alcohol or um, seeking power or acceptance from the world or money, whatever it may be, trying to fill that hole, that God-sized hole in our hearts with something that is not God. And we all know what happens when we try to seek that happiness and meaning in sin as it leads to unhappiness, right? It leads to that despair of not being fulfilled. And um, eventually, I kind of hit rock bottom. Uh, my junior year of high school, uh, the girl I was dating at the time, one of her best friends took his own life. And it was just a really challenging experience for myself because my whole vision of being able to make it without God and being self-sufficient, it all came crumbling before my eyes because the person I loved the most was falling into despair and she got into harder drugs and her eating disorder kind of went way out of control and I was trying to help her and try to save her and that I just realized that my love wasn't enough. We can't do it on our own. And I remember crying out to God, asking him, for help, asking him to help this situation, asking him for hope that this person who had tragically lost their life, that there was hope for this person. And either that, and it was kind of confronted with this really big dilemma because my, my girlfriend at the time did not have the faith. And so for her, there was no hope. There was no hope in God's mercy. And so I asked this question of, okay, either there is God or, is there, or, or there is nothing. Do we have hope or not? And little by little, um, I started opening myself up to God's mercy and starting to respond and seek God, seek that hope. And it kind of had a big breakthrough moment when I went on a retreat when I was in college and I remember going back to confession for the first time in a long time and actually having the faith to believe that it was truly Jesus in the confessional and having that faith to just lay down all of my load, lay down all of the weight of my sin, of my despair, and be able to present that to Jesus and to hear those words of the priest 
which were actually the words of Jesus speaking to me, I absolve you of all your sin, to receive that mercy and that peace. And I felt this new life, that he'd risen me from the dead, that he had saved me from the tomb. And then I was able to have my eyes opened at the Eucharistic feast, at the meal of the Eucharist, and I was able to see that the Eucharist, that Mass, was not just something that my parents dragged me to, (laughs) but it was a place where God was gathering his family for the family meal, where Jesus Christ was laying down his life, where he was giving himself totally, body and blood, soul and divinity, to me and inviting me into this intimate communion with the Holy Trinity, inviting me into this relationship with him. And so my life was just transformed and I started turning my back away from those, that life of sin, those false idols, and I started to try to make God the center of my life and I started, tried to give God my whole life. And so I started going to daily mass and daily prayer, started doing mission work, And I still felt this lack in my life. I still felt that God was calling me to more. And so I took this big decision to uh, take a year off of college and to do a mission year and to give that year to God to discern. And once again, I was, the more I gave God, the more I received, the more purpose I had, the more meaning I had in my life. And so I decided to leave everything behind while my dreams of of having a family and being a famous artist. I left that behind in order to follow Jesus more intimately and to to follow him in religious life. And so for the last 11 years, I've been striving to receive that mercy of God and to share that with others. And that's been the greatest joy of my life. It's a beautiful gift to be totally given to God and to be, to help, uh, to be part of people's journey towards him and to be encouraged mutually by their journey and to be part of this family of God. Well, you might be wondering, well, what am I doing here? Because I'm a novice now in Dominican order and I've been a religious for 11 years. So there's something that doesn't make sense, right? (laughs) So the thing that doesn't make sense is that um, the community that I entered, it went through a terrible crisis and scandal and we've all experienced this bad, the terrible effects of the scandal of the church in the last few decades. And um, it was something that really shook me and shook the whole community. And so I actually took this time to discern, and that's why I'm transferring my vows to the Dominicans. So I'm pursuing to follow God, follow God in my religious life by, by being a Dominican. And so hopefully, God willing, in a couple years, I will be... Um, officially a Dominican and uh, be able to serve the church as a Dominican priest, God willing. Now, I just wanted to encourage you because I know that we all had these experiences of being let down, right? Of being disappointed, or maybe we have this part of our lives that we feel like God has abandoned us. And that's kind of what I felt after uh, going through that, that difficult time um, in, my, in my religious community. Well, I just want to encourage you that God knows us. He knows that he's with us in this difficult moment, and he is wanting to be with us in that moment and to give us new life. And Jesus himself experienced that abandonment and that sorrow and that, 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 that pain of betrayal, but he turned that suffering into an offering to the Father. And that offering is fruitful. It gives life. And that offering gives us the Holy Spirit, which wants to renew us and wants to renew our church today. And so I come back to our first question, where do you find home? Where's home for you? Well, I hope that you find your home here at this church, in the Catholic Church. I hope that you find your home at this Eucharistic feast, right, where God welcomes his children, welcomes his family around the dinner table to share in the Eucharistic feast. So we know that we always have a home, and that's been my great joy. Wherever I've been, I know that I have a home in the church and that God is with his church. But also Jesus tells us that the Holy Trinity, the creator, the redeemer, that he wants to make his home in our hearts. 
He says, I will come to you. I will dwell with you. And we just receive the blessed sacrament where we are now these living tabernacles of the most holy trinity. This is my great joy and, and consolation and whatever trials I might be going through is that God loves us. He's with us. And he's working in us. And he's transforming us day by day and leading us to our heavenly home where we'll be perfectly happy in communion with the Holy Trinity and all of our loved ones for all of eternity. So I pray for you all that, uh, that you may grow in this relationship with this beautiful mystery of our faith, the Holy Trinity. And I ask you to pray for me as well as I continue my journey and my path uh, towards following God and serving his church. Thank you. If you'd like to say hi, I'll be just on the side, um, just to say hi afterwards. I'm happy to meet you. Thank you, Brother John Paul. Let me uh, go through these few announcements. Thank you again for your generosity toward the collection that was taken up today for the retirement fund for archdiocesan priests. Our parish's pastoral council has prepared a short survey for leaders the leaders of many ministries and groups in this parish. This survey is to help our parish move forward together when we start our new year of parish activities in the fall. Ministry and leader groups and group leaders, please stop by the parish office to pick up one of these surveys. There is more information about this in the bulletin. Also in our parish office, you can pick up registration forms for children's faith formation for the next academic year 2022-23. For children who need to prepare to receive their first confession and first communion. Finally, this coming Saturday, June 18th, is the, uh, we celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi, um, the Body of Christ. Well, all day Sunday as well. But on Saturday, the June 18th, we will be having something special after the Mass. A traditional procession around the block. We're just going around the block. We're not going to get lost. Okay? And we're going to um, uh, process with the Blessed Sacrament. And it's a, uh, a very traditional procession to do on, on Corpus Christi, uh, the body and blood of Christ. So join us in giving public witness to our faith in the real presence of Jesus in the blessed sacrament. Let us stand for our final blessing. The Lord be with you. The peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Let us sing verse 3 of number 196, hymn 196, verse 3. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, three we name thee. While in essence, O Holy One, undivided God, we claim Thee, and adoring then the knee, while we hold the mystery. And adoring bend the knee While we hold the mystery